us is how are you doing on today? I hope you're doing great. I hope you're having a great day. Well, I definitely am. And for those of you who are watching for the first time, my name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? My name is Miss Karen Fletcher. How do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do? I see Miss Charlotte. How do you do? And Anita, how do you do? We are so glad, so very glad to see you. How do you do? It's a great day. Isn't it a great day? Wow. Well, I know the holiday is coming. Hi, Miss Rail. How are you doing? I know the holiday is coming and a lot of people are just getting as excited, but I hope you all are social distancing and wearing a face mask and really watching as you go out because the coronavirus is real and people can get that. And so until they get a handle on how to, uh, actually how to, to stop it from growing within the nation. Because you know, the saints, we have, we have the power and the spirit of God but when we are around people that don't walk in the power of God, then we have to watch it. We have to be wise in our walk. So we're going to be wise in our walk, right? Okay, well, we have been talking about who this week. Who have we? We've been talking about two people, one in particular. And who are or who is the person that we've been talking about this week? Can you give me a name? Wow. I tell you, we are blessed. We are blessed. I'm blessed. You're blessed because of this person and their faith walk. They had a walk of faith and God blessed them because in spite of circumstances, they believed and they followed God. All right. So does anybody know who we've been talking about this week? I'm looking. I am looking. Hi, Miss Margo. And is it Tyler? How are you all doing today? Hi, Miss Madison and Ms. Marilyn and Vonda. I'm looking to see if you all know who we were talking about this week. It looks like we've got a new crew here. But let me see. One person I know is not a new crew. She's been here. But maybe she's not telling her mother. So we have been talking about Abram. That's right. We've been talking about Abram. How he was with his father, uh, Tara. And he was told to leave. That's right. That's right, uh, Madison. Abraham. He was told to leave his father and go where God led him. And he did go, but he brought his nephew with him. He was supposed to leave his kindred. He brought his nephew with him. And then they went forth. And then the nephew, they got so big, the nephew had to go one place. Abraham let him choose. You choose where you want to go. You can choose. If you choose here, then we'll choose there. And... And God and Abram let Lot choose, and Lot chose this really nice looking place. Oh, it was just all flourishing and green and all of that. But remember, I told you what looks good for you is not always good for you. And we found out he got in trouble when he was there. And then um, yesterday, yesterday, what did we hear? That the Lord, he made the covenant with uh, Abram again and told him he was going to give him uh, everything. And then Hagar, Sarah, Sarah decided she would help God out and she told uh, Abram to get Hagar pregnant and oh, it ended up just being a mess. And Hagar left, but the angel of the Lord saw her. And told her to go back. And she said, I, I see you as Elroy. And so she went back. And uh, she was under the submission of Sarai. Okay, so 
today. Okay, Mr. Kyrie, that's right. Hello, Mr. Kyrie, how are you? I see my dad, I see Sunise and Sanaya and probably Miss Robin. I'm not sure about Miss Robin. Sometimes Miss Robin watches and sometimes she doesn't. But today we're going to be on chapter 17 of Genesis. Now, in chapter 17 of Genesis, some things are going on. Abraham, do you all remember how old Abraham was when he left to go to Canaan? You all remember? He was 75 years old. 75 years old. And then when he had Ishmael, do you all know how old he was? He was 86 years old. 86. And Ishmael was not the promised son. So now, in Genesis 17, Abram was 99 years old. 99. Do you know anybody 99? I don't know anybody 99. I don't know anybody 99 years old, but I do know somebody that's 100. Wow. But I don't know anybody 99. So anyway, Abram was 99 years old and the Lord appeared to him and he said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Woo! God Almighty. I have all the might. That's what he said. God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. Now he already told him Ishmael is not the one. And he's telling Abram at 99 that you're going to be a father again. What? 99. But then he said, I am God Almighty, which means I can do anything. I have the might the power to do anything. Why? Because God is omnipotent. He is all powerful, right? He said, I am God Almighty. I am El Shaddai. I am the many breasted one. I am the one who can bring life to a dead situation. I had to put that one in there. As you, for the older ones, you get what I'm talking about. He said, I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abraham fell on his face, and uh, then God said to him, This is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become Many nations and kings will be among them. So those after you will become many nations. Right now, Ishmael is not the one. So Ishmael is not the one. And you keep telling me I'm going to be the father of many nations. What? And I'm 99 years old. What? Anyway, he said, I will confirm. God is talking. I will confirm my covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give the entire land of Canaan where you now live as a foreigner to you and your descendants. It will be their possession forever and I will be their God. Then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. So God said he's going to do this for him. Now, Abraham has to do this. So, he said, you and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. This is the covenant that you and your descendants must, must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. Their flesh must be cut as a sign of the covenant between me and you. So, there had to be some blood where people do these and, and I... I do a covenant, and it, it a blood covenant is you can't break that. And so, from generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. This applies not only to members of your family, but also to your servants, to servants born in your household, and to the foreign-born servants 
whom you have purchased. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant. Any male who fails to be circumcised will be cut off from the covenant family for breaking the covenant. Then, then God said to Abram, regarding Sarah. Now, remember. Uh, well, we'll just hear it right here, I think. I think it comes up. Uh, regarding Sarah, your wife. Her name will no longer be Sarai. From now on, you will call her Sarah. I will bless her and give you a son from her. Sarah's going to have a son. Abraham is 99. Sarah is 90. 90 years old. Do you know anybody 90? I know a couple of people in their 90s. And they do not look like they want to have a baby. Mm-mm. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. I guess that's why Sarah laughed. Anyway, uh, I will bless her and give, give you a son from her. Yes, I will bless her richly and she will become the mother of many nations. Kings of nations will be among her descendants. Then Abraham bowed down to the ground, but he laughed to himself in disbelief. He said, how could I become the father at, an, at the age of 100, he thought. And how can Sarah have a baby when she is 90 years old? This is what he's thinking. So Abraham said to God, may Ishmael live under your special blessing. You know, he thought that. He thought, you know, I'm 100. Sarah is 90. How are we going to have a baby? So then he says to God, well, may Ishmael live under your special blessing. But God replied, no. Sarah, your wife, will give you a will birth to you a son. You will name him Isaac. And I will confirm my covenant with him and his descendants as an everlasting covenant. As for Ishmael, I will bless him also, just as you have asked. I will make him extremely fruitful and multiply his descendants. He will become the father of twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will be confirmed with Isaac, who will be born to you and Sarah about this time next year. When God finished speaking, he left Abraham. On that very day, Abraham took his son, Ishmael, and every mill in his household, including those born there and those he had bought. Then he circumcised them just as God, is, God had told him. Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised, and Ishmael was 13. Both, Abraham's, both Abraham and his son Ishmael were circumcised on the same day, along with all the other men and boys of the household, whether they were born there or bought. All were circumcised with him. So God tells, God tells Abraham that he and Sarah are going to have a baby the next year. Abraham is 99 and Sarah is 90. Ooh, what a thought. The Lord appeared again to Abraham near an oak grove belonging to Mamre one day. Abraham was sitting at the entrance to the tent during the hottest part of the day. He looked up and noticed three men standing by. When he saw them, he ran to meet them and he welcomed them, bowing low to the ground. My Lord, he said, if it pleases you, stop here for a while. Rest in the shade of this tree while I, while water is brought to wash your feet. And since you've honored your servant with this visit, let me prepare some food to refresh you before you continue on your journey. All right, they said. Do you have uh, do as you have said? So Abraham ran back to the tent and said to Sarah, "Hurry, get three large measures of your best flour, knead it into dough bread, and make knead it into dough and bake some bread." Then Abraham ran out to the herd, chose a tender calf, and gave it to the servant, who quickly prepared it. When the food was ready, Abraham took some of the yogurt and milk and roasted meat, and he served it to the men as. As they ate, Abraham waited on them in the shade tree. And then the men said, now these were men that Abram saw from afar. He didn't know them. And then they said, where is Sarah, your wife? These are visitors. And he said, Abram, Abraham said, oh, she's inside the tent. Then one of them said, I will return to you about this time next year. And your wife, Sarah, will have a son. 
which means she's going to be 91 and Abraham's going to be 100. Anyway, Sarah was listening to this conversation from the tent. Abraham and Sarah were both very old. And so Sarah laughed silently to herself. How could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, my husband, is so old? Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, can an old woman like me have a baby? Is it is anything too hard for God? That's what he said. Why is she saying that? Is anything too hard for God? I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was so afraid she denied laughing. But the Lord said, no, you did laugh. He heard her. All right. So we heard the covenant, the promises that God spoke to Abraham. He gave Abraham instructions. And he, he told him, I'm going to be your God. I'm going to be the, with the people of your God. I'm going to bless your descendants, everyone that comes after you. I'm going to, to, to bless them. You're going to be the father of many nations. He changed his name from Abram to Abraham. He changed Sarai's name to Sarah. Told Abraham that she was going to have the son of promise. And his name was going to be Isaac. Abraham... Uh, had uh, Abraham went and he was circumcised along with everyone in his house. Then the, he saw these three men. He invited them over, have a drink, wash your feet, let me cook some food. And then one of the angels said that Sarah was going to have a son the next year. Sarah laughs because she said like they're too old. So that's what happened in a nutshell. Now, tomorrow is... Friday. I think we're just going to do a review because I'm not sure if you guys are going to be here. It's it's the uh, the holiday, even though officially the holiday is Saturday, but many people are going to be celebrating and leaving and doing whatever they do tomorrow. So we'll do. We might do a review. Let me think. No, we just won't meet tomorrow. We'll meet Monday and we'll continue our lesson with Abraham okay I think this is so this is so exciting to me because the things that God said to Abraham in the Old Testament in the Old Covenant he says and he works out in the New Testament in the New Covenant and we hear Abraham's name we hear about the children of Israel we hear how they were blessed and how we're adopted and how we're blessed. We're part of the nations. It is something, but that's how God is. He works it out and he doesn't just make stuff kind of. It's all a part of his plan. He has a plan for our life, doesn't he? And so our memory verse, not only does he have a plan for our life, we've got to trust him with the plan. So our memory verse comes from Proverbs Three, five, let me see. How are we going to go? We'll just do five and six today. So trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Okay, so now, what is our Bible song? What's our Bible song? Oh, I see Miss Leah came in today. Ooh, Miss Anisha, girl, girl, girl. I don't know when the due day is, but the due day looks like the due day is soon. It won't be, it will not be. Well, yes, it will be next year this time. We will see a baby, but that baby's coming real soon. All right, what's our, what's our, what's our Bible song for today? 
This little light of mine. Okay, you want to sing this little light of mine? We've got to let our light shine. In this world, everywhere we go, we've got to let our light shine. And our light is the light of God shining on us and reflecting out into the world. We've got to let our light shine. So here we go. Um, I forgot how it goes. Whoa. Okay, here we go. Whoa. Walking in the light of God. Whoa. Walking in the light of God. Whoa. Walking in the light of God. Whoa. Walking in the light of God, this little light, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, every day. Every way, every way, every day, and every way, I'm gonna let my little light shine. Not gonna let Satan put it out. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm not gonna let Satan put it out. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm not gonna let Satan put it out. in the light of God again allowing the light of God to, to shine on us and then we reflect the light of God to others all right Miss Danita I'm sure sorry not Miss Danita but Miss Charlotte Miss Charlotte Miss Charlotte you have put read your Bible on here today I know three days I know three days so we're gonna do do we have time? We do have time. That could be like our fun song. So we're going to do read your Bible, pray every day. What happens when you read your Bible and you pray every day? What happens while I'm getting ready? Let me see if somebody will put that up. What happens when you read your Bible and you pray every day? I'm going to look to see the answer. What is the answer? You read your Bible and you pray every day. And what happens? Can you see what happens? I don't see what happens. I'm looking. I am looking. Hi, Miss Denise. When you read your Bible and you pray every day, what happens? You grow, grow, grow. That's right, MJ. When you read your Bible and you pray every day, you grow, grow, grow. So we're going to do that right now. And we've got to start down low, okay? Here we go. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Glory, hallelujah. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Don't read your Bible. Forget to pray. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Don't read your Bible. Forget to pray. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink 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 
and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Also, read your Bible, pray every day, and you'll grow, grow, grow. Yes, that's what we want to do. We want to grow. We want to read the Word of God. We want to hear the Word of God. We want to pray the Word of God. We even want to pray the Word of God. So you've got to know the Word of God. You've got to learn the Word of God. You've got to hide it in your heart so you can grow, grow, grow. Because we want to grow in the will and the power of the Lord. Remember tomorrow, tomorrow is the holiday. So we won't be here tomorrow. But Monday, we will be here and we will continue to talk about Abraham the uh the the days or the life the life of Abra well now we're calling him Abraham and i mean he is from Genesis 12 throughout the bible there are things that that you'll read here and you just keep reading and you keep hearing about Abraham the the god of Abraham he had a son named Isaac and Isaac has a son had a son named Jacob and it is those three it is on those three that's the, the descendants and then they had children Isaac uh, had Jacob and then Jacob had 12 sons and then from there it just it just got real big, okay? So, we're going to follow the account of Abraham's life right now. All right, well, it's really been my pleasure being with you on today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you because you are the omnipotent God, the all-powerful God, the omniscient God. You know everything and the omnipresent God. You are everywhere at the same time. Time. God, you hear me where I am right here, and you hear you hear uh, Kyrie where he is, and and Charlotte where she is, and MJ and everyone who's listening. You hear us all, and you can answer our prayer. And God, I thank you because you are God, and only you can do that, God. And so we serve you, and we serve you with the best of our lives in Jesus' name. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know, everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Hey, Miss Kimberly, happy anniversary, and make sure you all share Jesus with everybody you know. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a safe weekend.